Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to see each of you here today. Because of your presence, this will be a different and special worship service. Thank you for being here. Jesus Christ calls us here, gets us here through the power of his spirit, and we have come to worship. Let us begin with these sentences of, of scripture. Please use your order of worship found in the bulletin. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friends in Christ, let us worship the Lord our God together. Join now in song and praise as we stand before our great God. Please stand to sing.
Please be seated. Let us continue with our prayer for today. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people. Pour upon us your heavenly grace. Refresh us. We seek not to be weary in doing your will. Hear your people as we come before you today in worship. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as the choir make their way back up to the choir loft, we will speak just a moment about possible ministries for you as you look at the bulletin and see opportunities to be had this week. I also would like to welcome visitors at this time and point out that we have all of our hymns published in the bulletin and all of the liturgy that we use during the worship service. From California, we have new residents in Natchez, Melody and Craig Comstock sitting up uh, near where the Smiths usually are sitting. And we welcome you very much to this place and are so glad that you're with us to worship today. And Diane and Joe Good, our friends that we are getting to know better and better through the ministry that they have uh, in another part of town where there are needs they are stepping up to uh, take care of. And we love working with them and hope this is something that the church will just embrace and help them to do in the weeks and months ahead, helping young people who are school age with uh, a safe place to be after school and tutoring services, a computer to do their work on if they need to, and many other things. You'll be reading about their ministry. So wonderful to welcome you today as well. There are other visitors, I imagine some that I do not know, but we welcome all today. And it's good to see Colleen back with us after about a year of uh, uh, absence due to COVID and other things that have been going on and others uh, welcome back and welcome this morning. I would remind you the bulletin has a little note about August 22nd. We'll be blessing student backpacks and laptops at that time and it can be all the way from pre-k to grad school. So we welcome everyone who is in school to bring um, a backpack or a laptop or whatever gear that you use for class that you'd like to bring for blessing and we will have a luncheon afterwards in Fellowship Hall, which is always delicious and fun. On September the 12th, we'll be uh, honoring our Sunday school teachers and rallying everyone to participate in a new year of Sunday school classes. So if you have a yen to teach Sunday school or to join a new class, please let me know and we'll start directing people to the place where they want to be. If you will look in the August link, I'm sorry we got this list too late to put in the bulletin, but the link will be coming to you the first of the week, either Monday or Tuesday, you should receive it. Monday by email, Tuesday by mail, if you get it that way, probably. There are lists of school supplies that are very short and simple lists that children need who are in the public schools from uh, mostly elementary grades, kindergarten through fifth grade, I believe it is. Look at that list and see if you would like to participate in getting some supplies, bringing them to the office, and we're going to have a handout of uh, nice supplies, uh, I think on the 8th, 7th of, of August. Are there announcements not in the bulletin that anyone would like to make this morning? If not, let us turn now to a time of confession this is, of course, a serious time to turn to God, to ask for, those, for forgiveness for those things that we've done or not done that are outside of God's will. And yet we approach God with joy, knowing that God always, in his mercy, forgives us when we come to him as penitent people. So let us join first in our call to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, 
and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Please join in the unison prayer, and we'll have a moment of silence afterwards to lift personal prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, you call, but we do not always listen. Cleanse us from your sins against you and one another. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. Have mercy upon us. Lead us as we strive through the power of your Spirit to live a holy, just, and humble life as your Son, Jesus, has taught us to live. know the good news of forgiveness. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. I can say to you today that your sins in Jesus Christ have been forgiven. Be at peace. And now let us give glory to God in song. Please stand. <laughs> people who have been forgiven through Jesus Christ, let us not fail to forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with all of you today. And let us now greet each other from the pews. Well, we have Melody this morning. I'm sorry, our other children are on vacation, I guess. They're do or maybe they're just getting their, themselves together for school. Are you ready for school, Melody? Good, that's good. Well, I have a little story that I will tell you, and it's one that you know something about because we've talked about David before, haven't we? And we know that he wrote a lot of the things that we read in the book we call Psalms, beautiful poems, some of them put to music, and they're really beautiful songs as well. So this morning, because we're going to talk a little bit about how God is with us in all ways, in all times, 
even when we're afraid, even when it's very dark and we don't know which way to go, God is with us. So this is something that David wrote, and here he is. You see him with his sheep. He started out, you remember, as a shepherd when he was a boy, keeping his family's sheep. And I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't start writing the Psalms, the beautiful poems, while he was out under the stars, keeping the sheep for his family when he was very young. So here is the little song that I want to share with you this morning that David wrote. Someone has paraphrased this for us, so it's not exactly what he wrote. The Lord is always with me where it's rough and steep or by a cool breeze or by a cool lake that is cool and deep. He walks beside me every day in all the places where I play in every step along the way. I walk behind him in his light in the darkness shining bright. I know I'm always in God's sight. He spreads out food and he comes to greet me. He says, everybody take a seat. Everybody come and eat. We're going to eat from God's table today. Nothing's on it right now, so we have work to do a little later, don't we? You know how we set the table a little bit later? Mm -hmm. That's what we'll do. Well, if you get up, we'll have a little prayer together, and I think your family wants you to come back to them. Helen is not here today, and uh, we did have someone who was going to go with you across the street, but I don't think she's here today. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us. And for sending us Jesus. And for sending us Jesus. To remind us. To remind us. How much you love us. How much you love us. Be with us always. Be with us always. When it's dark. When it's dark. Or when it's light. Or when it's light. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of thy Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And in that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. And on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening, You shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what we are, we complain against us. And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I've heard the complaining of the Israelites, and say to them, At twilight, 
you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, and then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And in the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there was the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. And now a reading from Psalm. They tested the Lord in their heart by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against the Lord, saying, Can God spread a table in the wilderness? Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. And he rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he let out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall within their camp and all around their dwellings. And they ate, and they were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for our second hymn. <laughs> seated. We will join now in a responsive reading from the epistle reading for today. This is from Ephesians 4, taken from verses 1 to 7 and verses 11 to 16. Please listen carefully to these words. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. 
There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. From Christ, the whole body is joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped as each part is working properly, promoting the body's growth in building itself up in love. And now a reading from the Gospel of John chapter 6, verses 24 to 37. Hear the word of the Lord as given to us today in our gospel lesson. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe it? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you it, was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. God is at work, even in the darkest places of life, giving food, sustenance for daily need, giving direction, words of wisdom, giving assurance signs of his peace and his presence. God is at work, and we can know through his actions that there's no question. God is God, and we are not. In his divinity, we better understand our humanity, and we discern our blessings as those who know God's faithful care of us. What more could the people of Israel ask God to do? Think about it. God freed them from slavery. He's taken them from Pharaoh's evil grip upon them, parted the Red Sea so they could cross on dry land, and then destroyed Pharaoh's army that was coming after them to take them back into enslavement. God provided guidance, a pillar of cloud by day and fiery light at night to show them the way that led to perfect freedom if they only would follow. Life lived in covenant with God. God is the provider 
of every good and perfect gift, the bread of angels to sustain the body and to fulfill all of the yearnings of the spirit and the soul. And here we are many centuries later, fed and sustained by our Lord Christ, sustained in our daily needs as he shares with us divine wisdom and direction for living in our own hostile world. Assured by his peace and grace, assured of his love by the shimmering cross of Christ, a living symbol of the bread of angels that he offers as we give ourselves to him. What more than the bread of angels does God have to give us as we seek to trust him? What more do we have to give in return for the freedom, guidance, and sustaining grace given generously to us by God in Jesus Christ? James, in his short but very powerful letter, tells us that when we are tempted by our own desire, pulled away from God to do our own thing, our desire gives birth to sin, and that sin, when fully grown, gives birth to death. But James goes on to say that God is the one who is the source of every generous act of giving with every perfect gift. The truly perfect gift was given in the Word made flesh. The perfect Son who came into the world to teach as one who lived among us, spreading the selfless love of God in his healing touch, in his teaching, in his feeding, showing the ways of God in his actions. Jesus Christ came as the ultimate blessing to the world the gift of grace, of forgiveness, and eternal life, the true bread of heaven, whose message, that of Jesus Christ, was often completely misunderstood. Jesus is the manna given in the story of the Exodus. He is the bread of life given on the cross and in the resurrection. Christ came in the world to feed the world, with bread that never grows stale. God's will is what Jesus came to reveal to us. God's will that in every day we look to him with trust, look to him for our daily bread, for food for our body and food for our soul, provided by God and given through God's Son who gave up his body in that sacrifice on the cross. Through him, all the world can know that God is love. All the world can know the difference between evil and good, between sin and obedience, and between life and death. When we put the Exodus story and the Gospel of John and the words of Paul as found in Ephesians all together on a morning like this, we have an explosion of God's presence among us in a message that ought to take our breath away. We see in these texts a melding of God's peace that takes away our fear, God's gift of eternal life that assures us of God's love that never ends, and Christ's command that we live together as one people, his body, in order to gather members of his holy team together to do his bidding, to live in his way, people who will follow and serve. We come together then as his body to work to become that holy temple that we read about, one body in the cross, Paul says in the second chapter of Ephesians, one body built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God, he says in our reading today. God from the beginning wants to possess every one of you. We read in the Psalms, especially in Psalm 139, that before we were even conceived in the womb, God knew us and claimed us. And yet from the beginning, we have resisted God's claim upon us. 
God wants Christ to dwell within each of us, as Paul says, in your hearts, to dwell in your hearts through faith as you are rooted and grounded in love. It takes only your decision for all of this to happen because it's there. God is there, present, always, offering the same gift again and again. It takes only your decision to give yourself over to God's possession, to be filled with all the fullness of God, truly to become a dwelling place for God. You, yourself, and you, the church, the body of Christ. It is in our life as the body of Christ that we are to exhibit to the rest of the world what we know about the work of God in the world, the gift of Christ, the gift of the bread of heaven. We know something about that the bread of angels, as our lesson tells us today, that sustains our body, sustains our soul, and leads us by day and protects us by night. Can we together be such witnesses of hope? Can we stand against the false prophets of doom? Surely we can. The way that we become believable as the body of Christ, the way that we proclaim to the world to make a difference in the world is to live the life to which we have been called as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. The reading from Ephesians admonishes us not to waste our gifts, but to use them to build up the body of Christ. These are words we hear often in Scripture in the New Testament. God will walk along beside us as we learn better and better to do the things that will ground us in the love of Christ. With God's help, we will no longer be those who are blown about by conflicting doctrines and deceitful schemes that seek to divide and destroy us and have already in the past and continue to divide us, to divide us as God's people. With God's help, we will learn to speak the truth in love. That is the truth that is found nowhere else than the Holy Word of God. That is the truth that we know is Jesus Christ himself. With God's help, we will grow into the full measure of Christ as God's children who want to live as Christ has shown us, to serve him, to be the hands and the feet and the eyes and the ears to be the voice and the heart and the compassion of Christ for the world. With God's help, we will offer here in this place, in this holy dwelling of the Lord, daily bread for those who are hungry. We will praise God and hold out our hands to others who don't know about this food, this food for eternal life, the bread of angels to feed the world. We can do that. We know in our hearts that only through our Lord Jesus Christ are we able to accomplish the things that he sets before us. And we know that we can do it. But as we lift our hearts at the table this morning, let us pause only a moment to understand what it is we're saying. Every time we come to the Lord's table, we say it. Let us stop and think about what we're saying. The liturgy urges us, lift up your hearts. And we exclaim in return, we lift them to the Lord. May God fill full those lifted hearts as we truly lift them this morning and give them to God for the fullness of Christ to come in and dwell there forever. May our daily bread and our daily prayers for his strength be blessed now and always. And may all praise be to our great and perfect God, the one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now please bow in prayer with me. Gracious Father, thank you for what you give us when we join together in this place for giving us your word on which we may feed, for giving us the bread of heaven, 
the cup of salvation. Bless us in this time together that we may truly feel your presence and that we may truly lift our hearts to you and that you may fill us so that we can go and serve you in perfect harmony with one another and with your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Together we affirm our faith when we are one as the body of Christ. And this morning we used the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your order of worship. Please stand as we say together these beautiful words about what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And let us turn to God now in a time of prayer. If you have come with the names of people in your heart that you wish to uh, say a prayer for, please hold those names dear in your heart as we pray together and ask God's blessing upon them. Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, we ask your blessings upon all the world, especially in those places where peace cannot be found, where justice is elusive and lives are broken by very sharp divisions among your people. We pray for your mercy and grace to be spread upon those places. And we ask that you would renew us in this place, in this community, that we might be aware of those who are in need of your self-giving love, that we might minister among those who need to know you. Let us be your instruments. Help us in this congregation, in our work and our worship, Look with compassion upon all in our community who are suffering. Bless all of the churches in this place and those who lead, and especially who are leading worship together with us as we are congregated here this morning, and all who are worshiping throughout the week. Let them be truly places where your grace is given. We pray for your guidance as we enter another terrible season of a virus that is making many miserable and sick. Teach us to listen to your voice and the voice of those, who, of those who care for us. Heal those who are suffering, whether it's mind, body, or spirit. We ask in a moment of silence that you would hear those names that are on our heart that we'd like for you to know this morning we care about and would ask prayers for. Gracious God, in all the things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now we call for the offering, a time to bring our tithes and gifts to the church. And thank you for your generosity and giving to keep our ministries going. And to all who are online, thank you for your giving. Hope that you will continue to help us in our ministries as you have so generously. Thank you.
gracious Father, we thank you for all of the gifts that you shower upon us. We ask that you receive these gifts from us as some token of our gratitude for what you do for us. Help us to use these gifts in a way that pleases you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn now to a time for communion. You may be seated, and I'll just speak just a moment about communion. We're going to have an anthem during the time that the table is set, and communion will be served in the way that it was last time. We will have um, communion by intention for those who want to come forward and take the bread from me and dip it in the cup that will be held by someone standing next to me. Or, instead of dipping, you can pick up a little cup and drink from an individual cup right next to the, the cup holder, the cup bearer. Uh, if you wish to stay seated, there will be people on either side of the sanctuary to bring communion to you, and they will be looking for you uh, to know who you are, and so it will be served. When you receive it in, your, in the pews, uh, you will uh, take it and eat and drink as you receive it with those who are around you rather than waiting till the end of our communion time. So we will begin now with our anthem.
Friends, this is the table of the Lord. We come, all of us, hungry, needy, hoping here to be fed the bread of life, promised that we will be. And so let us now begin together with a prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a joyful thing to give thanks to you, Almighty God, our Creator and Blessed Redeemer, Father of our spirits and giver, and giver of everlasting life. We marvel at your greatness and stand in wonder before the majesty of all your works. For sending Jesus Christ into the world to be our Savior, we thank you for his life and his teaching. Help us through the power of his self-sacrificing love to be obedient to your will. The cup of suffering which he drank has become for us the cup of salvation. In his death, he ransomed us. From death, he opened the way to eternal life. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us now continue in prayer. Eternal God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Grant that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By the fire of your spirit, forge us into a united people. Set our hearts aflame with a desire to do your will so that our witness to Christ may burn brightly in lives of joyful discipleship. Hear us now as we pray the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know that on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord brought together his best friends, those disciples who were closest to him. And he took a loaf of bread at that meal, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body. For you, take and eat, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took a cup, and as he poured, said, This is the new covenant, poured out and sealed in my blood. When you drink it, do so for the forgiveness of sins. And when you eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me until I come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The choir will have communion first, and then would you please start with the center uh, aisles and come down from the inside if you want to come forward, and then those on the outside come around and come down the center aisle.
pray in thanksgiving for such a meal as this. Gracious Father, you have fed us the bread of life, the bread of heaven, the bread of angels. You have given us the cup of salvation to drink. You have renewed us in a way that only the meal at this table can do. We give you thanks for the grace that is imparted here, for all that you give us in this place through this meal. We thank you for uniting us with people all over the world who are joined in this meal today, together with us. As we dream of unity one day, as we know that is your will for us one day, we ask that this day we might be one 
small step toward it, toward the unity, toward being one people, one body, truly, in the world. Help us in the small part that we have to play to be disciples truly dedicated to the unity of spirit, to the one body, to serve you in the way that you lead us through Jesus Christ. We pray in his holy and precious name. Amen. Let us stand now for our final hymn. truly been fed today by the word, by the cup, by the bread. Go out and serve the Lord and serve with gladness in whatever way you see the Lord is calling you. And as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. Amen.